Good morning. This is Wednesday, July the 22nd, and we're going to share a few uh, brief thoughts about our dependence on Yahweh, our daily dependence on Yahweh. So let's begin with prayer. Heavenly Father, as we enter into this time, we come into your presence, seeking your face, desiring to know and understand you, to be blessed by the reading of your word. Glorify yourself and sanctify us. In Jesus' name, amen. Dependence on Yahweh. So many times we get up and go through our day, and outside of our quiet time, there's very little thought of God and our need for Him. But in Psalm 37, we read in verse 3, Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and befriend faithfulness. We're told here to trust in the Lord, to depend on Him, to believe Him, and to dwell peacefully in the land, in the place where He's given us, to be faithful to Him where He's placed us. You see, I live far away from my family and have most of my life. Uh, my wife has lived far away from her family most of her life. And, and yet, we are to where we find ourselves, whether it was in Maryland or North Carolina or Tennessee or Alabama, God wanted us to trust him where we were at and to be faithful and to live in peace uh, in the place that we were at. We're to do good where we're at. Where we're found... Uh, whether it was any of these states, we were supposed to be doing what God sent us there to do. I used to tell my children when they were growing up, and I'd still advise them this too, because I have to remind myself of it too, so I want to remind you. Uh, the greatest thing in the world is to be where God wants you, doing what God wants you to do. Everything else, just it just drifts by. It's of no account. It's, it doesn't last. But to be where God wants you, and that can be anywhere in the world. And to do what God wants you to do. And that's to be faithful to Him and to be a witness and a testimony of His goodness and His loving kindness of the gospel of Jesus Christ. And so we're to trust in the Lord. We depend on Him every day. We don't fret over things. We know where, where we're supposed to be and what we're supposed to be doing. And He's going to take care of the rest. Uh, remember, I've shared with you before Matthew 6, 33, My life first, but seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. And all these things, the needs in this world, will be added unto you. He'll take care of us if we'll depend on him. <clears throat> then it says, Delight yourself in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. Now that doesn't mean he's going to give me a convertible Mustang and uh, a, a, a motorcycle and things that I would desire. He's not going to let me go surfing and stuff like that. That's not what he's talking about here. The closer I walk with the Lord, the closer I know him and understand him and am intimate with him, the more my desires are like his desires. Because I begin to see life the way he sees it with an eternal, heavenly perspective. So he says, commit your way to the Lord, trust in him, and he will act. We're to delight in the Lord and we'll receive from the Lord. We're to commit ourselves to the Lord and we'll receive from the Lord. Too many times we expect to receive without committing ourselves and delighting in Jesus. We just expect God to to give us whatever we want. It doesn't work that way. We can't live our own lives devoid of God and expect Him to graciously bless us. He blesses those who love Him, who fear Him, and who wait on Him. He, he's fair to everybody. He's just to everybody. But He blesses those who seek Him. Verse 6 says, He will bring forth your righteousness as the light. He's going to reveal all your righteous acts. Righteousness basically means doing what's right 
every time. And that's going to be revealed to men. They're going to know that they can trust you. They, people are going to know that they, you have integrity, that whatever you say is going to come about. This only comes from God, this type of reputation. We can't develop it or work it up ourselves. He says, in your ju justice as the noonday, okay, it's going to be in broad daylight. People are going to see the character of God in our lives. We can't fake it till we make it. We have to depend on Him to transform us to a whole new person to live for Him. And then in verse 7, we need to be content. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Fret not yourself over the one who prospers in his way, over the man who carries out evil devices. We're not supposed to envy the world. We're not supposed to be worried or concerned about the world. We're supposed to be content in our dependence upon God. We're supposed to quietly wait on him to act. He says he'll act, but he tells us, to be content. Too many times I see people all around me who are discontented. You can tell by what they talk about and how they talk about it. You can talk about how they act, how they respond to things, that they're discontented. Uh, usually they're gossipers, they're murmurers, they're complainers, because they're not content with the life that they find themselves in. Therefore, they're not content with Jesus. They may say they are, but they're not. We're to be content where we are and with what God's got us doing. We're all at different points in our life and different places in our life. And, and next year, we'll be at different points and different places again. But we need to be content to be there and to do what Jesus has us to do. Dependency upon him every day for our needs, for our ministry, for our life. It's all about Jesus. He sustains us and keeps us. Praise the Lord. May you have a blessed day as you depend on Jesus today.